What is up guys? We are back with another video today. Different format and different content than usual. I know a lot of you guys out there subscribe for uh, looks at my props and prop making and prop building and stuff. This is a little bit different today. We're going to be talking about tools. This is going to be about some of the maker focused mods <laughs> that I made to my DeWalt. I know that sounds a little crazy, but I promise you these changes I made to this drill make this thing more useful at the workbench uh, than it was without them. So where to begin? We got four mods or kind of upgrades that we're gonna look at today. Uh, the first two are just purchasable accessorizing type things. Uh, the other two are, are a little bit more custom and are gonna require a little bit more fiddling. Before we get started, before we talk through the mods on this particular drill, let me say this video is not for contractors who want to throw their drill off a 12 foot ladder uh, onto concrete just to prove uh, that they like to beat up their tools and they still work. <laughs> I have a drill that I beat the crap out of that I use for rough projects or outdoor projects. This is the drill I keep at my workbench for uh, small precision work when I'm working on props. Um, and I, it doesn't get beat on nearly as much. I usually end up doing fine, finer detailed work with it. So I just want to make that clear up front because this, this setup is not going to be uh, for everybody. This is the DCD 771, which is not a new model, not an expensive model. This thing still runs like a champ. I love this drill. It does plenty for what I'm doing in this particular setting. Okay, so let's talk through a couple things here and see what we got. First up, Easy one, easy upgrade. This is DeWalt's old generation rapid release. So typically imagine, you know, you guys want to change your bit. You hold your chuck, you run your drill in reverse, you pop it out, you swap it, you pop the new one in and lock it. Unfortunately with this drill and with a lot of these DeWalt hand chucks, this thing wants to loosen up over time, especially as the brake is causing the drill to slow down really quickly. Um, and it drives you nuts to have those bits falling out, especially if you got your hand on a prop and you're drilling that freaking bit falls out when you stop, drives me bananas. So I wanted a quick release adapter so I could really wrench this down and use uh, this hand chuck less often. So this thing is great. It's designed uh, to be used with one hand. So you pull it, it unlocks your bit, your bit comes out. How sweet is that? Uh, this is an impact ready bit from DeWalt with their magnetic um, tip. I love this particular bit. They're really strong, they do a good job, but I hated how slow they were to get in and out. So this is lovely. You pop it in, it's locked, you're ready to go. And then when you're ready to pull it out, boom, one-handed. There it is. The one-handed thing, I'm telling you, guys, you know this. If you're holding a prop and you're drilling and you're making a little precision hole, the one-handed thing uh, is money. Doesn't seem like a big deal. It is huge in person. Okay, so on to mod slash upgrade number two. This is another purchasable one. Uh, these are, any of you guys who have DeWalt's or frankly other tools have similar setups. Um, DeWalt has a, a little nut, a little hole with a nut inside built into their base of their drills where you can mount accessories. Uh, this is a bit holder. This one just has a regular little clamp. I just have a small flathead in there, but it can take pretty long bits as long as they have a hex back to them. So regular clip holder on this side and then on this side is a magnetic one. And you might ask yourself, well, why the heck would I need both? Uh, I can tell you, there are my screws. So I'm working, I'm pounding them in, boom, grab, screw on, boom, go again. Being able to hold my spare hardware or spare drill bit right there is incredible. Uh, it saves me, you know, it probably only saves me a few seconds in the moment, but it makes it makes sure that I like the drill doesn't have to leave my hand. I'm just much more efficient. Um, this clip holder I think was like seven bucks. Was it seven bucks for a pair? I got two of them, one for my impact driver over there. Um, but th this one's cheap and this guy, the magnet one I think costs slightly more for a pair, but it was still pretty cheap. Let's say it was 10 or 15 bucks for both of these. Uh, yeah, totally, totally worth it. It's gonna save you seconds that at the end of the project actually ends up saving you a ton of time and frustration. Okay, now we get into the stuff which is a little bit more DIY but still super handy. I hated that my drill did not have uh, any levels on it. And again, if you're a contractor, uh, you're probably thinking, I get by without a level, who cares? It's not that big of a deal. Well, if you're doing little precision work 
and, and small, you're drilling into resin or doing small, fine, detailed stuff and you want to keep those holes straight, um, the levels are handy. I, I wish DeWalt would actually just do them like this from the factory. So uh, level added up top, level added at the back. Hang on, let me show you there. Level added at the back. Um, the levels are super cheap to get on Amazon. If I can find them again, I'll throw a link in the description. Uh, they should still be around. They're like... 10 bucks for a set of 10, I think. Is that right? 10 for 10? Uh, regardless, you get a whole bag of them for pretty cheap, uh, which was great because if I'm if I get into a project where I'm beating the drill up and I shatter one, I can pop it off and glue the replacement back in. Uh, the key to setting those on there is to use a little Dremel bit. I don't have one out here to show you, but a little round flat Dremel bit. I put it in my drill press and I just dropped that bit down in there to create like a little seat maybe like, I don't know, an eighth of an inch deep, just enough for the level to sit down into. Uh, and I did the same thing on the back. The rubber is a little trickier to get through at the beginning, so just take your time. Uh, I got a little, I was rushing and I chewed into the leather, the rubber a little bit on the, on the side. Um, but take your time, you know, go slow so that you make sure you don't pop through the casing. Do, go just enough so you can create a little bit of a seat in the drill. You're gonna wanna make sure you take time to clamp this thing down, check it with levels, make sure that, that you're drilling in straight so you have a good start. And then I glued mine in with some uh, JB Weld quick set epoxy and I let it tack up maybe halfway um, and then I put the level in. That way I could tweak it and adjust it left to right and front to back to make sure that it was level and make, <laughs> there's no point in putting a level on your drill unless you're gonna set it correctly. Um, the back one, I actually clamped, uh, an old, I put, put an old drill bit on, clamped this thing in my vise, and then on the back, uh, I, I got it all leveled with some levels, and then, I, and then I glued the level on to make sure it was accurate. Up top, I found the most level surface I could in my home, which was actually my countertop. Uh, it was almost dead on level uh, in all directions. Clamped it down and then and then got the level tuned uh, on top, you know, in, in, that, in that epoxy once it was just thick enough that I could play with it, but it wasn't gonna drift. Okay, so there are the levels. I know it seems overzealous, but I'm telling you guys, having levels on your drill it might only save you a trip or two to your drill press if you're making like a like a especially a downward uh, hole. Uh, but those couple trips, I mean, that adds up throughout the course of a project. You know, the less time I'm spending putting my drill down or going to a different tool or having to unclamp a prop I'm working on or just leave my workbench, that makes me way more efficient. So, uh, Dewalt, I don't know why you're not doing putting those levels on at the factory, but. I sure am enjoying them. Now, if you have a different size driver, it's gonna probably be a little trickier to find a home for that top level. Uh, and you gotta be careful about where you have enough depth in your casing to actually, you know, drop it in. Okay, so on to our last mod slash upgrade uh, for those makers out there who wanna fiddle with their drill. One sec, I need a refreshment, I'm parched. Okay, now this next one is going to seem crazy. Uh, when, I, when I show what this bar up top is, I know a lot of you guys are gonna think that is nuts and there's no way I could possibly need something that geeky, uh, but I promise you it is actually super helpful. I know it looks ridiculous, but it is really, really handy. So this is a telescoping magnetic arm that I actually salvaged out of an old screwdriver that had this little telescoping arm next to the bit. It was a heinous screwdriver other than the, the magnet feature. So check this out. I stripped this uh, arm out of the uh, said cheapo screwdriver and then I just mounted it to my drill. And this thing's pretty long. Um, it goes a little bit further than that actually. And it's got a magnet at the end. Nothing I have over here is magnetic unfortunately, <laughs> but you get the drift. Um, having this thing on my drill is awesome because it allows me to quickly uh, just rip that out and grab stuff that may have fallen um, into a piece that I'm working on. Uh, but the more important thing, the, the feature I actually use even more often that I didn't expect is this makes a really good down and dirty depth gauge. 
Now, I know what you guys out there who use depth gauges are thinking. You're thinking, no effing way, uh, my depth gauge bolts, you know, onto my drill bit. For those of you guys who haven't seen them, they're like a little ring that clamps around your drill bit so you know exactly how deep you're going and you can still kind of ram your drill into the, into the whatever surface you're working on. It's going to have stopping power, right? This thing has no stopping power. So let's say I want to go half inch deep or something. Um, it is not going to allow me, it's not going to like, it'll push back as I push on it. However, if I'm working in a soft material or just doing a small cut and I just need to eyeball a quick hole and I don't want it to poke out the backside of whatever I'm working on, this thing gives me a great visual reference point even though it doesn't lock in place. Three quarters of the time for the work that I am doing, uh, it's enough to, to give me the kind of depth gauge, fu depth gauge functionality I need without having to run and grab a separate device to bolt to a drill bit that then needs to be taken off, yada, yada, yada. For down and dirty stuff where you don't need stopping power and you don't need this thing to lock in place, this thing is super handy. Let alone the fact that the magnet, I guess I do have these screws back there. The magnet is awesome. Look at this. Woo! <laughs> the magnet is super handy. The magnet is great for grabbing stuff um, at the workbench. So uh, some of this I realize probably seems frivolous, but I promise you makers uh, who are doing a lot of little detailed crap, uh, those four upgrades uh, are huge and they have definitely made me more efficient with my drill at my workbench. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you really beat the crap out of your tools or, and you are, you know, you're more of a contractor, uh, the levels and that magnetic arm may not survive the full blown abuse you're gonna put your tools through. However, if you're a maker and your drill sees more of a workbench type life, these upgrades are awesome. So just to recap, we've got the bit holders at the bottom, one with a clip, one that is magnetic. Uh, we got the rapid release guy in the front. This is DeWalt's old model. They've discontinued it and the new one I don't like as much. So grab this while you still can. And then we have the levels, one in the back, one in the front. Make sure you take your time to drill those clean. Uh, do not drill all the way through the casing, just enough to, to create a seat for them. And then take your time leveling your drill to make sure the levels are set correctly. Last but not least, you got the magnetic pull-out arm, which can double as a down and dirty depth gauge if you do not want to deal with mounting your actual depth gauges. Boom, DeWalt, great brand. Even their lower end drills like this really seem to do the trick and you know they've held up great for me. There it is guys, hopefully that inspires you to get into some of your tools and make some uh, mods or adjustments which make them more useful for you. Depending on what you do, you know, your setup may be different, but uh, with any tool, um, there's usually a little bit of love that you can put into it to optimize it and make you just a wee bit more efficient, which at the end of the project really adds up. So there it is guys, thank you so much for watching today. Uh, I know this is a different type of video, different format and kind of different content than usual but I think it might be helpful for some of you guys out there. We'll see you later, bye.